Breaking news, breaking news. The plug-in pitch map by Synaptic is 50% on sale right now, down from 180 to 90 euro. Pretty expensive for a VST plug-in in general, but the price might be justified considering pitch map's legacy. 2013 was the first year pitch map videos were released on YouTube, so I suppose the plug-in is at least 11 years old now, which would mean that it's so old it's almost hitting puberty. After it was released, it seems people anticipated its use case to be to transform existing music to other musical scales, as demonstrated in this video. Meet Dennis, the CEO of Synaptic, giving an interview about PitchMap here. Hi, I'm Dennis. Uh, I'm the CEO of Synaptic. We're a brand new uh, audio software company and we do stuff based on artificial intelligence. Beware that this video is 12 years old now. The term AI was used in a very different way back then. We cannot really know what it means in this particular context, but we do know that it must be something incredibly fancy because we just know what pitch map sounds like. Pitch map, which is a uh, polyphonic uh, pitch processor, which works in real time, so you can take a song and change the, the key or the, the melodies. <laughs> He's also using PitchMap to change an existing song's chords, so both the developer and the users have not known what was about to happen, they weren't even close. As a plug-in developer myself, I find that to be super exciting. You can be the creator of something and completely don't know what's going to happen with it. It makes me wonder if I will ever develop a plugin where people will truly surprise me about the way they use it. This is how PitchMap is typically being used nowadays. You take a sick bass patch and you make it even more sickening by resonating all its noisy components to other melodies, chords or the entire scale of your project. Note that I keep the links to many of my resources in the video description. This content creator for example has way too few subscribers for how sick this video is. You can change that. Oh, oh yeah right, you are watching Beats Basteln and I'm the host Florian Mugala and now we are hopping into the door and um, we are just hearing this beat. And you can probably already imagine pitch matches on this track. We'll definitely do some more experimental experiments soon, but I decided to prepare a little something to just show some basic techniques that can be useful when using pitch map. So, the first thing that I did here was just loading an instance of Synth1 playing this. Okay, so when I am opening Signalizer, my Visualizer plugin of choice, which is free for Windows, and go to the oscilloscope view and select uh, No Peak Decay Auto Gain and the Envelope Trigger Mode, then it will show me the envelope of this impulse. So my goal was to make an impulse that is as simple as possible with the lowest decay time on the amplitude and on the filter I managed to accomplish this. Now with the LPDL filter on maximum resonance I got this very sharp sound. It wouldn't be a different sound without resonance. So technically this would be an even more normal impulse, but I wanted to have one that has a little bit of bite, which is why I also added saturation. Because in the spectrum that creates something that looks like this, which has a few dips, but mostly it has content for the whole spectral range, which is good, because that means we can carve out stuff from it with spectral compressor. Shit, what's up with that? <laughs> ah, shit, the plugin does not remember its bounds. Ah, okay, okay, whatever. So, when I'm playing that back now, you will see that this will reshape. 
So now the spectral balance was reshaped to whatever I have set the parabola in, in spectral compressor. Um, 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 I made another video about it, um, you can check out that for more details. Now when we load pitch map immediately on that, it sounds like this. It sounds like exactly nothing, because pitch map, for some reason, it needs to detect that there is something harmonic in the signal already. And if it detects that it's all percussive, then it just won't react to anything. That makes it different from chroma, by the way. People always compare pitch map to chroma, even though, I mean, it's both resynthesis, but check out what chroma does in the very same situation. So chroma definitely reacts, let's say, linearly to everything that you put in. It reacts the same to everything, regardless of what it is. And it will resynthesize everything by letting it resonate. Now that we have chroma in this chain, and I have it here on purpose before pitch map, we do have harmonic content, and pitch map can do its thing. It's still not much of a thing, it's a small thing what it does. Let's just keep it like that for now and first solve a different problem, which is that the transient is kind of sharp. So I loaded an instance of Diopsa. And this already gives us the first big revelation about pitch map, and probably also chroma, which is that when you're using resonant all-pass filters, you can make sure that these frequencies are kind of boosted in the way pitch map picks them up. Actually, we could make this a melody, and I think we should start getting a little bit more experimental right now, because now the idea is there. We are loading a randomizer, setting it to the frequency, just keeping the resonance the way it is right now. As you can see, when you put the all pass filter on the low resonances, it has more of a noisier effect. And you should probably refrain from fast modulation like that. The automation precision parameter in Diopsa, that's a very special kind of parameter. Most plugins are not sample accurate because they were made with the Juice framework, which just doesn't support it, even though it is part of the VSD3 standard. But Diopsa was made by Robert, and Robert has its own plugin framework. So he can just say, fuck that, I support everything, which he does. And you can see the result of that in this parameter, which gives you control over the automation precision. So higher values cost more CPU because the all pass filters are being updated way more often per second and low values are more like every other plugin that you use. Um, so zero automatic precision is just fine in most situations. It is just updating per block, I guess. Can usually not hear the difference, but sometimes it can make things slightly smoother to turn this up. I think we should still keep a safety compressor behind Diopsa now that there is modulation on it. So let's copy this compressor here. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about in this chain is, let's say, the multiband FX. What I like to do here is just slap 
kilohertz dynamics everywhere in the chain, especially with the upwards compression, so that it brings up the detail from the lower stuff, because pitch map creates a lot of noise in between the notes, and that's the kind of stuff that you want to get pushed up later. <laughs> I want to have an alternative setup for the multiband container. So when macro is turned down, it's just like the way it is right now. When it's up, it should be different. Because what I want the up state to be like is it should cut off a lot of these sounds very sharply. What does that sound like? That's not very interesting because we still need to adjust the attack to also be really fast. Same for release. And the threshold. Great. I should wrap this around another chain so that I have a gain control here when I use another macro and just say, okay, this macro should be exactly the same macro as this one, except that it also adds gain. <laughs> And now we have a control that can make everything a little bit more stuttery, which is nice. And you could already hear sometimes that there is sometimes a little bit of sizzling in the background that says or something, even though there is nothing too crazy in the chain yet, probably just because of the modulated all pass. So you can imagine this will build up pretty hard with time. The more stuff we randomize and add complexity to everything, the more we will hear something that will surprise us. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Very watery flavor. Ah, it's kind of crazy. I think I would call this video something like uh, the pro engineers don't want you to know, but you don't need skill, you just need gear. Download PitchMap right now. No, it's not sponsored content, by the way. I do not have affiliate link to PitchMap, but it would be kind of cool if I had. Wink, wink. I mean, the sale also ends soon, so would be cool if there were affiliate links, right? Uh, 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 uh. Now let's try something different, something that will probably completely destroy the rhythm of this thing and make it not fit as a beat anymore. I mean, this would still work somewhat, but what I'm going to do now will not work anymore as a beat, but I'm okay with that, because what I'm going to do is I will load the delay, because oftentimes when you want to add more interesting harmonic influence into your mud pies, you want to resonate a lot of stuff and there is no better way to resonate as far as i know than modulating a delay starting from zero delay to something that is close to zero delay and then turning up the speed a little bit and the mix and the feedback it will not feedback from silence apparently but now we will play something and then we'll go crazy <laughs> So this works pretty well, but we can make it work even better by going into the inspector view of Delay Plus and saying that it should transfer from one uh, delay rate to another with repitch mode instead of fade, which means that it does not cross fade between different parallel delay instances that are running in the background, but it will just change the playback speed of a single delay, just like a tape. Thank you. 
Okay, keep in mind that you should check the update rate of the delay very closely because that can have an impact on the smoothness of the transition. And there are also the clipping options. I think I should choose compressors so that it will have the minimum amount of distortion with effects feedback. Yeah, whatever. Can do that. Cross feed stereo. Sure, why not? <laughs> I think there is no stereo at all yet, is there? No, there is not, so we need to make sure that there is. And for that reason I will wear my headphones again. I just replaced the old uh, thingies that you have on your ears that make it smooth. The, these are still DT999s, but now they don't have these white thingies anymore, so they don't look like it anymore, but it feels very good. Very nice. So the most obvious thing that you could try to add with to this whole thing is to put something into the feedback loop that will just make it white. For example, a frequency shifter. Cool. Now the next thing that I was wondering is, you know, I have this melody coming from Diopsa. What if I have two of these and they have their own automatic melodies each? Maybe I could even put one of them on the left side and the other one on the right side. Wait, that would mean that it's better to use a stereo split. Yeah, instead of an FX layer. Yeah, nice. Oh, it can also sound nice to turn chroma off now that there is so many other stuff that creates resonance. So I guess this is also a good moment to randomize something. The color knob of chroma. The funny thing about pitch map is, even though it is like one of the most popular plugins of all time and definitely a, a legend, it is actually not the most impressive plugin in, in traditional terms. For example, it only has five knobs that really matter. Everything else is just set up. It even has some UI issues. For example, you can set something here like um, C sharp major. And then you will close the window, open it again, and it's okay. No, it did, it did remember that. But if I reactivate the plugin, which would also be the case if I just opened the project again, then it will see, uh, show C chromatic again. And also when I click on these, it also, like, um, what? It, no, it doesn't even show stuff. Okay, because it's MIDI map. Okay, usually it shows these points which show the remapping. And when you click that they should go on and even then the stuff that is shown on this um, drop down thingy will not update. So I don't know Synaptic, uh, I mean this is the most popular plugin you ever made and one of the most popular plugins that has been ever made in general. Why don't you just make some of these finishing touches that it really feels like something that um, was just 
put on sale for a price that is still pretty expensive. So I go back to MIDI map mode in order to map MIDI. This is what I'm doing all the time already, by the way. There are these chords coming from an instance of Synth 1. And I um, send them to the Soul Chain after the instance of Synth 1. So both Chroma and Pitch Map use these chords. <laughs> Now I know what you are thinking, and I was thinking the same, which is what happens if I put um, chroma or pitch map into the feedback loop of the delay. If I put chroma in here, this happens. Obviously sometimes it will just over resonate, because when you put anything that is a little bit like an equalizer into a feedback loop, then whenever you are boosting frequencies, it will resonate on these frequencies longer. Since resonation is exactly what chroma does, most of the time it is um, just a, the thing that happens. So now let's put chroma before the delay instead and put pitch map into the feedback loop. Pitch map is much more let's say, nice about being put into a feedback loop. It will not just randomly resonate stuff. It will only do that when it sees that it's a harmonic. So I guess that prevents it from distorting too hard. However, it also added a lot of delay. Stuff that you put into the feedback loop of a delay cannot have latency because that is just physically impossible with feedback loops. And uh, pitch map has a latency of 92.9 milliseconds, which is a lot. You didn't hear that in Chroma because Chroma has a latency of uh, nothing until you click on high quality when then it has 23.2 milliseconds of latency. If you compare that to other plugins that have to do with pitch correction but are not as fancy as that, like Kirui, um, 16 milliseconds or spot on, 3 milliseconds and of course the king of them all, auto tune with 2.5 milliseconds. This is just to give you a little bit of perspective of how much latency various kinds of plugins induce that have to do with correcting pitch in some way, even though some of these are more complex than others. Now the next thing that I was wondering about is what if I put the stereo split with the two diopsas into the delay. Before doing that I should make a chain which contains the stereo split and the compressor that comes after it, because I added this compressor to work together with the diopsa instances, so they need to be together at all times. Okay, that was surprisingly good. I was expecting it to distort pretty hard. Actually, let's um, randomize the feedback as hard as we can and see what that does for us. Okay, nice, I like that. So now we have these moments where it is very quiet and cute and we have these moments where it is joyful and loud. Uh, that's pretty cool. Let's do something about the frequency shifter because sometimes it can be cool to modulate a frequency shifter range up. <laughs> And I feel like every time it is pitched up, it should also be a little bit less about mixing it with the dry signal. Should be more self-contained then, and also maybe less stereo, or even more. Let's find out. Oh, <laughs> 
Yeah, pretty cool, I like that. Also, let's try a pitch shifter. Because, you know, since we're already here with the frequency shifter, why not also slap a pitch shifter on it? This is all about pitch, let's go. Oh wow, that's cool. I didn't expect that to be cool, actually. I usually like frequency shifters more, but this seemed to have much impact. I want to use a macro because I wanted to figure out two bass patches before going on. Okay, so we have the first one that is just pitching up and it has a very long grain size so that it creates these cute t -t 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 sounds and when this is going down it will do something a little bit more close to actually hearing the pitch that you're setting. Nice. Randomize. Now one tool that you often see in sound design videos for uh, mud pies uh, is equalizers. Yeah, simple equalizers. They, they are making a comeback now <laughs> after all the resonance suppression fanciness. No, seriously, because you can uh, influence the way pitch map is working by using an equalizer. You can just say, okay, on this frequency it should most likely find something. Yeah, I like the sound that I just crafted, but I also like the sound before the equalizer somehow. So it would make sense to just modulate the gain scale up and down, I think, with a randomizer of course. What else? Let's go. Yeah, that's kind of cool. One thing that I always wanted to do with ProQ is also having macro controls for things like frequency. Because I know that this is a thing in one of the minimal audio EQs. I actually don't know if I have it installed right now because there were some UX problems with when this was modulated. But what I like about this EQ, which is not present in ProQ, is that you have some macro controls for shifting all points all together, left and right, which can create some really cool effects. Maybe that's a good reason to install this again, I don't know. Okay, now it's time for another spectral effect, I think, which is uh, Digitalis. I want to use Digitalis on this. Now I will do the most obvious thing that can be done here, which is randomizing the packet loss and also randomizing the priority parameter. I always feel like this is a bit like threshold and ratio in a compressor, because when priority is turned up, the transition between filtered and not filtered is really hard. 
and loss is just how much you are filtering, you know? So it is really kind of threshold and ratio, but in a spectral gate sense. Whoa. Now, this makes me realize right now that it would be cool if Digitalis also had um, automatic MIDI input thingy because then I could just say what the scale is that I want here because I have no idea what the scale is and then I could dial in the quant parameter. Mm, yeah, no idea what the scale is supposed to be. Let's not do that. Holy shit, I just noticed that the uh, battery of my camera is almost done. So at this point, I need to kind of wrap this up with one last thing that I want to do, which is throwing a different sample at the same uh, mud pie. Because usually when people make mud pies, they do it because they can then throw everything else at it as well and also create nice sounds from it. So let's test if that works with some sounds from my sample pack that I've released. Uh, link in the description, by the way. This sound. Yeah, nice. Here we have some percussive stuff. Yeah, nice. Yeah, that was pretty cool too. A lot of cool little sounds in it. I wish I could talk about so much more now, but it's kind of pointless when the battery is going out soon. And I think most of the crucial information is definitely already said, so bye bye.